Welcome to my channel Rue's Life. So it's a glorious sunshiny day here again. It's only ooh, 20 past nine on Saturday morning and today I'm going to crack on and do some organising here in the polytunnel um, and a little bit outside too. So I've just started, you can just see there there's some radish on the side. So I'm going to take these radish because they're ready for eating and freshen up these baskets with a view to popping some more radish in. Uh, I'm just going to go through these um, tomatoes and take a few more of those lower um, side shoots out and just check that they're all supported well. Um, I'm going to pull some of the lettuce. Those peas, I'm going to harvest the rest of the peas that are on that um, plant and then you know, they're coming out ready to put some new peas in and the same with the broad bean. Everything else is looking pretty good. Um, so you can see over here, um, I've got peas here really starting to establish, um, some basil, some broad bean, um, there's some more perpetual spinach here, some chives, some spring onions, the pumpkin and the squash. Um, there's some lovely herbs here that um, we went for a jolly over to visit my mum and dad last week on Anglesey um, and uh, mum has a gorgeous garden and she's always grown herbs so she's given me a selection of herbs there which I'm just going through and labelling up um, I'm just going to establish them a bit more before I plant them out the perpetual spinach -da! <laughs> it is no more um, I decided it was just too stalky and it, I needed to start again hence planting um, some more seeds which are establishing in that little pot um, so this um, needs topping up with compost and I will put the, the new perpetual spinach in there this bed here is really ready for a clear out but it actually needs a really good top up of compost as well um, to bring the level back up and also just to put the nutrients back in and um, so these onions here are coming out um, I'm going to assess the carrots I'm going to take out everything that I can with a view that I'm going to wind this bed down and then I can top it right up and I'm actually contemplating potentially doing the pumpkins and possibly the squash in this bed and keeping them inside after my um, failure when I, I planted them outside. I'm not sure, I haven't decided yet, but it's a, it's a possibility. Uh, the tumbling toms are looking really, really good. Uh, there's some onions there which can come out. That chard is past its best, so that can come out. Um, some spring onions again they can come out so I'm gonna have a really good old clear out and a tidy up and a sort out and then when these are more established they can be planted into the spaces that everything's come out of and then I will sow some more seeds so I can just keep keep this produce coming so that's what I'm getting up to today so the tomatoes are looking a bit healthier um, I've just taken out some of those side shoots. We've actually got little cucumbers now starting to, to grow, which is fabulous. Um, I've taken out all those peas and the beans. The radish have come out. And then I've just started to clear this bed. Um, but it's absolutely boiling in here. Um, we stopped for an omelette. Chris has been out on the tractor. It's it's 35 degrees in here, um, but <laughs> we went uh, climbing last night um, till quite late and my shoulders are absolutely shot. So I'm going to um, just have a quick sweep up and I'm going to stop and then I'm going to get everything watered. I should have watered first thing, but sometimes I don't water until I've finished working because otherwise everything's just, you know, so soggy, you get soaked. So I'm going to have everything good, tidy up and a water, and then I'm going to stop for today. Um, and I'm going to start, uh, we've got a lot of mowing and clearing and sorting to do, so I'm going to crack on with that. Um, so yeah, and I'll, I'm going to just keep updating you. I think this is going to be a, a, a video, that a uh, vlog that goes over a few days. <laughs>
it is now Sunday, yes, Sunday morning. Um, we've got up early again just so we can get some work done while it's cool and um, we got a huge amount done yesterday um, so we're going to push on again today. Um, so I'm back in the polytunnel um, and here is where we're up to. There's a bit of um, spinach that's been bolting so I usually chop that off and give it to the chickens because they love it. Um, I've got the red onion and the white onion up and the tiniest garlic in the universe. Um, it was the garlic I put in outside and it was supermarket garlic and uh, yeah I've just decided to pull it up because it was not really doing. Um, but it'd be okay to use for you know casserole or something. Um, so yeah so the red onion are here and the, the white onion are already um, hanging in the barn. Um, there's the herbs that I got from mum. These are the kind of nursery, the nursery corner. Um, so yeah, the peas, basil, broad bean, perpetual spinach, chives, um, spring onion, celeriac, carrots, pumpkin and squash. And then in this bed here, I've cleared out a huge amount um, to make some space. I've just left in the more established plants and those that I want to continue to develop. Tumbling tomatoes looking great. There's still some onions there. That chard I need to sort. Potatoes, the parsnips, spring onions up there, which we're sort of picking and using as we go, but I'm going to have a, a clear out and, and put the new spring onions, the younger ones, into those baskets, top them up and um, put some, some, some younger plants in there. Courgettes are coming. They've become my new perpetual plant. <laughs> so from raving about perpetual spinach now, it's the courgettes that just keep you know anyone who's ever grown courgettes you'll know that you know you end up with more courgettes than you know what to do with um so i think i might make a courgette cake this weekend um you can just about see the tops there of the chard that swiss chard there still some beetroot there and then if i just come round strawberries now the strawberries have been doing really well and we've had strawberry after strawberry after strawberry um but they seem to have ground to a bit of a halt um so any tips on what I can do with these or is that it now if they had their season? Um, yeah, any suggestions, let me know. I was hoping to, to keep those going through the summer, um, but they seem to have ground to a halt. So, um, yeah, interesting. Um, I've pulled out the peas and the broad bean and I will plant the, the younger plants in there and, and give those a chance to establish. Mm. Still got the Charlotte potatoes there, some lettuce, which we tend to kind of pick and use. Um, as you know as and when we need it um, the beans there now the beans I'm allowing to sort of sprawl and go up and over although I know some people would you know chop the tops off to make them bush out more at the bottom but I, I kind of quite like the way that they they grow up and across the crop bar there um, the little baby bull's blood I can't speak baby bull's blood beat <laughs> say that when you've had a gin which I haven't incidentally at this hour of the morning um, so that's looking good the um, Rocket there is past its best. It's ready to come out. Um, the cucumbers looking really healthy and the tomatoes are looking great. And then if I just pop outside, you can see there's still a lot of work to do out here. We need to start um, strimming and mowing. Um, but the potatoes over there are looking really, really good. Um, the rhubarb is still grand. And then if I just pop over here, uh, again, you can see there's a lot of uh, weeds to come up um, and a lot of strimming and tidying to do. But in the bed here, the onions are looking absolutely fantastic. They're almost ready for lifting. Um, and then I've got the leek, uh, the garlic that I pulled because it was just not doing. Um, and then there's just a few flowers there. There's some Californian poppy that have been flowering. Um, and that just needs a little bit of a weed as well. So all in all, um, yeah, everything's looking good. <laughs>
sitting in the barn waiting for Chris. He's just finishing up a little bit of strimming and we're about to have a well-deserved cup of coffee and a breather. So Chris has been working hard uh, with the tractor topping. Um, our tractor is ancient um, and it overheats very quickly. So that's one of the reasons we, in, in the hotter weather, we have to do things early in the morning or late in the evening um, and you can't do it all in one hit, uh, which is quite good because it kind of makes you do a little bit and then go off and do something else. So he's um, strimming up the driveway at the moment. Uh, this gadget here, for those of you that don't know, it's called a rag fork um, and it's specifically for getting out uh, ragwort. Uh, now we've got, I'll just take you over here, um, this is ragwort. Um, so it starts with like a rosette and then it grows up. It does have a yellow flower on it. Um, it's uh, really, really toxic, poisonous to everybody and everything. Um, so we have to try and keep it down. We don't want it to go to flower or to seed because we, we're trying to keep it off the grazing land. Um, it's toxic to, to pretty much um, all animals if they eat it. Um, it has a specifically bad effect on the liver, um, but it's also toxic to humans. So if you ever are um, trying to get rid of ragwort, if you've got it anywhere, don't pull it up um, with your hands, bare hands. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Um, now, it's a very deep, deep, deep rooted um, weed, and that's why this fork is really, really good. Um, I was always a bit sceptical about these when they first came on the market. Um, and then I bought one and oh my God, it's fantastic. So I'm just going to lift it up and see if I can show you. Um, so it, it's just a, a funky little design. Um, and so you, I'll see if I can do this. I could probably do Chris helping. Um, so you, you know, you push it in underneath the roots, push and then rotate and it literally pulls and then you pull uh, the whole plant. Um, and it's fabulous. Um, it absolutely has saved my back. So here's the rhubarb bed, um, I've weeded around the edge, the, the long grass and weeds there um, and I've taken a few um, weeds out of the actual bed itself. Um, just along the side here of the polytunnel, I've taken all the weeds that are sort of down that gap. Here is the massive truck full of ragwort. Um, with ragwort, the best way to get rid of it is either to, to actually, I'm not big on plastic bags, but we do have some plastic bags left over from um, certain horse feeds come in plastic. Um, so you can just put them into a plastic bag and tie it and leave them to completely rot down um, or burn it. Um, but it is the sort of plant that you have to keep on top of and must not let go to seed. And also be very aware, as I said, that it's quite toxic. Um, so then I've also managed to weed all the way around the edge of this bed and while I've been um, you know creeping around on my hands and knees I've done a little bit of weeding in between the plants there as well um, so yeah not bad not bad so i um, gonna have something to drink and then push on So I've just shown you the enormous wheelbarrow full of uh, ragwort and actually it's hogweed, hogworts I keep calling it, hogweed and ragwort, um, which um, we've pulled up with the rag fork and I've now started um, strimming. So if I just show you, I have strimmed a massive percentage of this paddock just to keep it down. Chris is actually currently mowing uh, the menage so that I can school the horses starting from Tuesday. So it's all starting to look much tidier. Uh, but I'm ready to have a drink and I'm going to go and see how Chris is getting on. So just while I'm passing this area, this here is all just piles of um, rubbish which we will um, have to take to the recycling centre um because yeah we're getting quite a quite a pile so that needs to be organized so um we're really lucky we've got the horse trailer so we can just fill it up um, and we can go to the local recycling center and put everything in there relevant pieces now you may be wondering there's some wood there you may be wondering why we're not using that for the wood burner um it's actually leylandii and um, these delightful trees here which i think at some point were big tall leylandii and were chopped way before we we moved here um the person that cut them just left all the logs lying 
Um, now we've had some and we still have got some in one of the paddocks as a little mini ecosystem um, but you know there's only so much you can leave lying around the place so um, yeah they're all no good for burning. Um, Leylandii if you don't know is quite toxic and um, it's certainly not very good for burning and um, it's re really um, if you did burn it you get a lot of sap and that that's not good for um, you know it can cause chimney fires because it it, it uh, messes up your, your system um, and even if you've got a liner it, it just fuzzes it all up so you know you just got to get it cleaned more often and it's quite difficult to clean off um, and you also have to be very careful handling it because um, if you get the sap on your hands you can have quite a nasty reaction to that and this is my um, grass manage area which again because I've not been riding the horses and because of all the rain it's got a little bit overgrown so we've topped it with a tractor and as you can see Chris is now making a start with the mower to get that down it's got to be um, you know, it's a nice level surface and we have to keep the grass nice and short um, for, for schooling the horses um, so that's what he's up to so I'm just going to ask him if he'd like a cup of tea which I'm sure he'd be very grateful for so you can see where Chris has been topping with the tractor, it's looking heaps better, um, still an area in this corner and this this old, um, it's like a big, um, it's an old pile of um, rubble and old building materials from the people that were here before us so we just let that grass over, it's a bit of a, a hump um, so that'll need trimming. But all in all everywhere is starting to look a lot tidier and a lot more organised. <laughs> debris all over my glasses and all over me um, but um, I've successfully got loads of trimming done. Uh, Chris is still mowing away, we had some nice lunch and then we pushed on again um, but it's really kind of hotting up here now. Um, some of the chickens, um, I didn't video it because it, um, it's something we just needed to crack on with and, and get done quickly. Um, I don't routinely you know, bath them or wash them but um, a few of them had um, quite dirty bottoms um, so I just wanted to get those clean, you know, the flies are around and you've got to be careful. So um, we caught all the chucks up and then checked bottoms, <laughs> very uh, glamorous. Um, anything that was clean, you know, we let them go and anything that was dirty, we had a little um, bathe and then a rinse and then a check over. Um, so they're all sorted and they're out in the sunshine drying off and dust bathing. Um, so I've done loads and loads of trimming, we've done loads and loads of mowing, I've done some weeding, some tidying, some sorting. We're properly on track now. Um, it doesn't look too pretty, but now that we've done that first cut, if we keep on top of it now, um, you know, everything's going to get back to how it should be. So I'm really, really pleased. So it's just coming up to about half past four on Sunday, um, and we've worked really hard Friday, uh, yesterday and today. Chris is just finishing up with a little bit of uh, mowing, and I will show you what I've been up to. So I've been strimming in here in the paddock next to the polytunnel, and you can see it's looking a lot neater now. So I'll just pan around 
so you can see that around the polytunnel area is so much tidier and I've done a little bit of weeding as well around the edge of the beds so everywhere's looking heaps better still an absolutely glorious day here and I'll just take you around and show you the other areas um, and what we've been up to so this is just a little tiny patch of grass that's between the house and the woodshed by the herb bed um, so I've just run the mower over that and done a bit of weeding there were some nettles growing in the corner so I've pulled those out and just tidied up some of the grass that was growing through the cracks in the yard area there uh, so again I know I keep talking about these marigolds but I'm just so pleased with them so the marigolds and the sunflowers are you know exactly as I imagined them to be um, and then some they look so so pretty and um, there's always bees on them and uh, the little hanging baskets complement them on the sides beautifully and then there are actually um, some Californian poppies lurking underneath there but I think they're going to grow up and hopefully they won't be totally uh, pushed down by the, these marigolds but they're just fantastic uh, the sweet peas I don't know if you can see those they're starting to climb up the back now so I'm hoping they're going to climb all the way up and we're going to have a riot of colour towards the end of summer and then I always seem to film these early in the morning or late in the evening um, so when they've all got their little faces closed away because they do they're like daisies and they close so look how beautiful they are if you can see those I'm struggling to film with the sunlight but uh, yeah so we've had you know some color in these pots and there's still color to come this is ever so pretty over here bobbing about in the wind And then I um, ran the mower right across this uh, lawn area yesterday, but on a high setting just to, you know, to get it cut. Um, and as I say, it wasn't looking particularly pretty. Um, so Chris, bless his heart, um, I've been tidying and putting things away and he is just running the mower over the lawn and it looks so much better. It was starting to look like a hay field. And then this is the field that uh, has now been topped with the tractor and you can see where the, the white markers are. There's my menage um, and I, I plan to get back on the horses this week um, so it's ready for me to ride. So all in all we've really worked hard clearing this fence line, trimming, strimming, topping, mowing, tidying um, and I'm really pleased. It's been uh, a lot of hard work but we've really enjoyed it and um, so tomorrow we're going to have a day out and um, we're going to get up early get all the animals done um, and we're actually going to go out for the day and um, we're going to Chirk Castle which isn't far from us uh, which is National Trust property and we're going to treat ourselves and have a day there <laughs> Uh, we've worked super super hard um, Friday Saturday and Sunday um, last night we had a really nice curry which I made um, predominantly from courgettes um, spinach and then other vegetables thrown in and some halloumi um, and I made a courgette uh, cake with a lemon drizzle which I've done some footage of me baking that and, and uh, cooking the tea as well um, which you will have already seen um, so I've decided I'm going to end this vlog um, here. Um, I was contemplating maybe vlogging today. We're actually going to, as I said, um, a National Trust property. But you know what? I think we're just going to have a day off, just the two of us. Um, I've pretty much done all the animals now. So I've been up, as I say, since five. The, um, one of our dogs is on medication. So she's had that. Um, and we need to leave an hour at least before feeding. So um, they've both been fed. Um, and while I was waiting for that hour... Uh, between medication and food um, I've been around the farm uh, checked the sheep and Larry the lamb um, checked on the little pony made sure he's got water checked the big boys checked their water sorted out the chicken 
chickens. <laughs> chickens uh fed them and checked their water and mucked them out give them some fresh bedding um checked all their bottoms again everybody's looking fine um i've watered everywhere opened up the polytunnel watered there so we're good we're good to go so i'm really looking forward chris is having a bit of a lie in this morning um so i'm gonna let him sleep for a while and then um once we get up um the day is ours so thank you so much for watching um i hope you're all having a cracking weekend wherever you are and whatever you're getting up to and um, take care and i'll see you all soon bye